Hi, I'm Liberty Lou, standing in the Arsenal Democracy exhibit at the American Heritage Museum. Normally during these videos we talk about the artifacts, for example, like the last Buick model off the line before they switch over to making tanks, planes, and all sorts of things for a war. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. <laughs> So as you can see, it takes a lot of work to keep these in tip-top shape. So today we're going to take you behind the scenes into the maintenance shops to see what actually goes into keeping these all running. Hi, so I'm here with our head maintenance person, Dick. How are you? Oh, just peachy. And yourself? Just a beautiful day here before Christmas. Love it. So I have a few questions for you. For example, what do you think is the biggest challenge of keeping a tank running that's almost 80 years old? Well, look, the biggest part of keeping them running right now is the fact that we have got probably the best volunteer staff of any museum anywhere. They're dedicated people. They know what they're doing. They've got a lot of experience. And with a tank like this, they know where to go. It goes out every day on a running, uh, on a track run or a driving experience. When it comes back in, we know what to do first. Preventative maintenance is better than heavy maintenance. And oh. one of the best things we found out too, instead of repairing the tank, we found out that it's easier to repair the track that they're running on. Mm. So that's really helped us a lot. The more you know. So, are parts available? Where do you find them? Amazon? No, no, <laughs> Amazon is fresh out. Um, ah, okay. No, we've, we've been fortunate to find uh, a lot of the parts we were able to obtain at the Littlefield Collection. Okay. We brought back several trailer truck loads of parts that we, we need and use all the time. Other stuff we fabricate ourselves and there are other supply places around the country and particularly in Europe. It's got a very rich environment for parts because we had so many over there during the war and left all that for the occupation forces. So it's available. More you know. And lastly, are there any big projects planned for this winter to get ready for spring and summer for all of our big events here at the American Heritage Museum? Well, at the American Heritage Museum, every project is a big project. We take the everything to heart. We want it done right. We want it to be very um, interesting for the people that come. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've got some good stuff planned out. Can you tell us one of them? Yeah, in fact, we're standing in front of them right now. This is the Grizzly, and uh, it's in a configuration where it's going to be as if it were on an assembly line. Okay. So we're going to remove the control differential mm -hmm. and the transmission and put them on tracks as if it's being assembled to be separated. The engine will be suspended from a crane in the rear as it's half in and half out. As, as it was on an assembly line and that was part of the procedure and on the other side of the building over here we're going to have another hull similar to this one okay all painted up just a hull making a turn like it's the next one to be assembled so it's going to be a very interesting feature Ooh, that's going to be great well thank you so much for your time we greatly appreciate it here so let's go into the maintenance shop where maybe you can show me a little bit more behind the scenes let's do it So we're standing here at the maintenance shop in the museum. One of the biggest questions that we get is, do these vehicles still run? Yes, actually most of them still do. We believe in a living history experience more than just static displays. So from early spring to late fall, we have tank fest, battle of the airfield, reenactments, and we also offer tank ride, rides and drives. So Dick, would you be able to tell us more about what it takes to keep these in tip top shape? Yeah, we've got a, a very busy crew. Uh, we usually know in advance where they're going out as people normally pre-register for rides or drives. So we know which ones are going out and when. And we pre-check them before they go, mm -hmm. checking all the grease, uh, fluids and greasing and all the stuff that has to happen. And that goes out on the ride and drive. When it goes back in that night, we check it again for the following day. Some engines have two, uh, some tanks have two engines, so it's double trouble. And others just have one big one. So can you tell me more about the M4 Sherman Liberty that you named after me? Yes, uh, yeah, that's the workhorse of the fleet. It goes out almost every day on either a work or a drive. Um, it's, it, everybody really wants to drive the Sherman more so than the Chaffee. That's the favorite piece. Of course, because it's named Liberty. And then can you tell me more about the Chaffee? The Chaffee is a much lighter tank. Uh, it has twin engines instead of one. It came from the factory as dual control, which helps. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun tank to drive. It's fast, it's light, maneuverable, and uh, it's, it's just a great tank. And then, what are, what am I, what is this? <laughs> this is a Ford GAF engine, which is the replacement engine for the M26 Persian. 
very similar to the GAA, which I have behind me over here, which would be the Sherman engine. One of the big differences is, is that the Pershing engine was the first of the automatics, the rear, rear sprocket drive. So it's the basic same engine with some configuration changes. Fantastic. And are these the only two tanks that people are allowed to drive in, ride in? Uh, right, presently right now, yes. If we have a project all the way, maybe by spring that'll be ready, but the M36 rides and drives Ooh. also dual control. Ooh, very nice. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> As you heard Dick say, our M4 Sherman Liberty is the heavy hitter for tank rides and drives. This is the only Sherman in the world to have full dual access control. Let's take a look inside to learn more about it. See you inside. So we are inside our Sherman tank, where I am currently sitting on the co-driver side. And as you can see, not a whole lot of room. Pretty cozy in here. So the co-driver side is identical to the driver's side. We have our shift, our clutch, gas, and the brakes, which are also how we control the direction of the tank. If you wanna go right, you pull the right side. If you wanna go left, you pull the left side. If you want to go forward, pull forward, and if you need to stop, pull all the way back. Some might say it's easier than driving a car. So I'm inside the M24 Chappie. It's very similar to the Sherman being nice and cozy, the co-driver's on the right side, and the same total dual access control. The only difference is this is an automatic, which makes it millennial and Gen Z friendly. So at the maintenance shop at the American Heritage Museum, there is always something happening. Right behind me is the M36 Jackson, which this winter they will be removing the gun, the turret, the Russian diesel engine, and restoring it, bringing it back to its original condition. So after this beast is finished, it will be ready for tank rides and drives along with our M4 Sherman and M24 Chaffee. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes at the maintenance shop at the American Heritage Museum. If you're interested in our tank rides or drives, go to AmericanHeritageMuseum.org to learn more about it. This is Liberty Lou. See you next time. Gotta get them nice and clean and ready. <sighs> it's gonna take a while.